there's a chair over here and a chair down here. Anybody who's on the stairs that wants to come sit, there's a nice tall chair there. If you guys are good, are you good? Okay. All right. Thank you, Michael. Our next storyteller has told stories at the Reboot before. Colleen Craig is a writer and editor who lives in Los Osos. She loves books, gardens, cats, and the San Francisco Giants on some days and hiking, entertaining, and drawing on other days, and her husband every day. <laughs> Colleen's story is called Grave Concerns. Please welcome Colleen Craig. Hi, everyone. Um, this is, is really feels wild. Um, I, I've been so quiet the last 18 months and here's a whole group of people and I'm, I'm telling this little story. Um, but I'm, I'm really happy to be here. I had, I had just finished feeding some horses that were stabled in a beautiful little ranch in a rather remote valley up in Sonoma County. And the owners of the ranch were going to be out of town for a couple of days, so we agreed that I would come out and I would feed my little Arabian and their two geldings. And when I told my husband I'm driving out to the ranch, he said, oh, take my car. It'll be much, much better in the rain because it had been storming uh, the last couple of days and the roads were very wet, very slick. And um, at the time, I was driving a 20-year-old uh, Volvo sedan, which was a great car. But in horse terms, it was kind of like a, a big, muscular, slow-moving Clydesdale that um, needed some shoeing. And my husband's car was a much, much newer, sporty little Infinity uh, that was more like a very spirited thoroughbred and had better tires. So I very slowly wended my way through the back roads to the ranch, and I got three flakes of hay and brought them out to the horses, and then I had a couple of very heavy bags of beet pulp in the trunk, which is a horse supplement. So I, I lifted up each bag and staggered it into the barn and left it in the barn, and then uh, dodging raindrops, I ran back out to the car and I grabbed the lid of the trunk and I shoved it down, realizing a half second too late that this was not my slow moving Clydesdale. This was my husband's peppy thoroughbred. So I watched in sort of slow motion horror as the lid flew out of my left hand and smash landed onto my right hand that was leaning in for balance. And there it was, immobile. Uh, I, I, I had essentially just locked myself into my own car. I, I couldn't get my hand out, tug, nothing. I, I was caught in the moment, literally, and it hurt. And in the meantime, the sun was setting, the rain was falling, and there was absolutely nobody around to help me. So after a few stunned moments, I evaluated my options, and I realized I didn't have any options. Uh, the keys were in the ignition, and uh, very uncharacteristically for me, my cell phone was in my purse very tidily, and my purse was very tidily sitting in the front seat. So, even worse, I was going to my book club, my monthly book club meeting that night, a uh, very casual group of eight to 10 women, and uh, if somebody didn't show up, nobody much noticed, life happens, <laughs> but my husband didn't expect me home till 10 o'clock that night, which gave me about five hours before anybody was gonna notice I was missing. 
so then I started to think, maybe I'll get hypothermia. I, I, I didn't know, it was a very cold day in November and it was about to be a very cold night. And uh, I, I thought, surely I'm in some shock having my, my whole hand smashed into the trunk and maybe that sort of, you know, uh, speeds along hypothermia and then I started thinking about what are people gonna think if they find me the next day you know I'm I'm lying out in the mud with my hand hanging from the trunk and so I thought stop Colleen stop what do people do in a situation like this they call for help they call for help even if nobody's around, not even Lassie. So I called for help. And I sounded something like, um, excuse me, anybody around? Help, help, I'm, I need a little help here, trapped. And as I was calling out, I noticed that none of the three horses in the paddock that were eating their hay, even swiveled their ear around to acknowledge my voice. And that is because I am basically a very shy person. I don't want to make a spectacle of myself, evidently, even when nobody's around. I've always been very shy. Uh, I, I like a good time. I really like a good time. I don't like to be the center of the good time. And uh, I could never have been an actress, for example. And I might be one of the very few brides in California that actually asked her photographer at her wedding to please stop taking pictures of her. <laughs> I just don't like the camera on me like that. And as I was thinking these thoughts, I had what I call my epitaph moments. Epitaph, as you all know, is what's written on your gravestone. And I started thinking about what people would have written on their headstones. Something like, here lies David Smith, a brave soldier who valiantly sacrificed his life for his country. Rest in peace, noble soul. Or here lies Suzanne Johnson, a kind, caring, and compassionate woman, a friend to all who met her, a light in the world. And then mine would say, here lies Colleen Craig, dead, because she was too shy to call for help. And I thought, is that what I want my life summation to be? No, no, I don't. I, I thought of Emily Bronte, no coward soul is mine. So I took a few deep breaths and I steeled myself and I shrieked into the void and I called out, help me, help me, please, somebody help me, save me, please, is anybody hearing me, please? And uh, the more I called, the more exciting it became. Um, I was really having a good time. And, and I was just unabashedly living in this moment where there was no ego. I was just doing what I needed to do. And even the horses had trotted over to the fence and all their little faces were hanging over the fence and they were looking at each other like, have you ever seen her do this? No, I've never seen her. Well, that is one loud human. Because I was, I was really loud. Until my voice gave out. And then I stood there shivering and I tried to hug myself can't hug yourself with one hand stuck in the trunk. So I started stamping my feet in preparation for warding off incipient hypothermia. And uh, as I stood there stamping my feet, I thought I saw some movement in the distance. I wasn't sure, I thought maybe this is delirium that precedes hypothermia. Uh, and the sun had set, it was getting dark. But lo and behold, the, the movement turned into two figures running toward me. And they got closer, and it was two young, great-looking Hispanic guys that I realized uh, must have been working in the vineyards nearby. And they pulled up 
breathlessly looked at me. I, I, their faces were priceless. We all stared at each other, and all I could think of to say was, Los Javes están en el carro. <laughs> and, and one of them looked at me and said, the keys are in the car. I said, yes, yes. <laughs> and, and he pulled out the keys, and, and he went to, you know, unlock the trunk, and I just couldn't look. I didn't want to see what kind of bloody, pulpy mess my hand was. And the lid opened, and all the blood rushed to the extremities, you can imagine. And uh, I couldn't look. And I heard him say, it's OK. It's OK. So I did look, and it wasn't bad. Uh, it was so flat. I didn't know fingers could get that flat. And, and, and it was like a cartoon hand, you know, that gets steamrollered over. I mean, it was just flat as could be. But it wasn't too mangled. It wasn't very bloody. I could move my fingers a little. And I was so thrilled. I wanted to pay these guys. I grabbed my purse, give them all my money, write a check. They didn't want anything. They, they just wanted me to go with God. And they wanted me to be a little more careful. <laughs> And they said it to, you know, like they were talking to their very sweet but dumb mother. And I said, okay, I'll be careful, I'll be careful. And I called my husband, who wasn't around. Uh, so I very carefully and gingerly drove myself to the ER room. And about an hour and a half later, I walked out of the hospital with some very bruised cartilage, but my fingers and hand intact. And better still, my epitaph yet unwritten. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you, Colleen.